G.I. Joburg is the code name for South Africa's daring, highly trained review force. Their purpose? To offer reviews and information on the finest G.I. Joe toys from the past and present. Today we take a look at... The Cobra Mamba. Sleek, deadly, a fire-breathing amalgamation of purple, black, and red. Arguably the only Cobra rotary winged craft with an enclosed cockpit. And definitely the most well-armed. Two pairs of Serpentor 9mm machine guns for peppering light vehicles, infantry, and structures. Four Nemesis mini missiles for engaging enemy armor. Four Diablo supersonic missiles for knocking down aircraft. Two cluster bombs for all out mayhem. And this, the mother of all bombs. You could sink a battleship or level a small town with it. A removable engine cover reveals her Servotox NT 5A turboshaft engine. She can achieve speeds approaching 180 knots, fully loaded, with a range of 390 nautical miles. Combine her heat reducing, noise eliminating smash system with her already low profile, and you have one stealthy bird of prey. And that's not all. The pilot occupies the central cockpit while the weapons control operators carry out their functions on the dual Mumbo Offensive Light Tactical, or Multipods. If it is deemed tactically advantageous, the Multipods can detach to form maneuverable rocket planes. This three-pronged attack can be devastating on the unwary, but as there is no way to reunite the pods with the Mumbo in flight, this feature is used sparingly. The pods are landed under computer control using a combination of retro rockets and drag chutes. Only the toughest Cobra personnel make the cut. The Mamba's most unique attribute is naturally its intermeshing rotors. The helicopter would be the latest entry on a very short list of synchroptors, so named because of the precise synchronization required to keep the meshing blades from colliding. The design eliminates the need for a tail rotor, thereby saving power, but some engine efficiency is lost as neither rotor lifts directly vertically. The Mumbo, however, is a prime example of a synchroptor operating at peak efficiency. Its excellent speed, in spite of its heavy armament, is testimony to that. The Mumbo saw extensive use around the time of its debut during the Cobra Civil War in the Marvel Comics series. A captured Mumbo was piloted by Lift Ticket to deploy a scout team of Joes onto Cobra Island. The very next day, Mumbos were ill-utilized by an impostor Cobra commander to engage Rattler aircraft under Serpentor's command. In spite of 5 to 1 odds in favor of the Mumbas, the Rattlers were victorious, proving helicopters are not designed to dogfight. The toy features two differing styles of bomb release mechanisms. The cluster bombs are wedged off by a simple lever. Note that for it to work, the bombs cannot be pushed too firmly onto their posts. And a more involved trigger for the release of the mother of all bombs. The cage snaps shut thanks to internal springs. The rotor blades are spun by twisting the red knob on the underside. Of course, this mechanism is prone to a few problems. Sagging rotors from heat, poor storage, or just age can cause them to strike the fuselage. The attachment points become useless if they do not hold the blade securely. For the mechanism to function properly, there cannot be too much play on these points. The blades can only orientate in one way to avoid striking one another. Though a liberal amount of superglue can cure that, provided you won't ever need to pull the blades off. The multipods detach by pulling down and away. They reattach by lining up the jet exhaust with the post on the helicopter and pushing the pod until you hear a click. The plastic is adequately reinforced and after playing sufficiently with six different clips, I am confident to say this is not a real danger of breakage. The cockpit interiors are a bit sparse and very cramped even for the intended O-ring star figures. Multipilots are seated in a reclined position and are secured using back pegs. Instrumentation is provided by head-up display readouts, duly represented by a sticker on the canopy of the pods. This tech made its first appearance with Cobra's fierce attack jet, the Firebat, and has been a trademark of Cobra air power ever since. All you need to know about your aircraft without having to look down. It is unclear how the pilots control the aircraft, but I'll wager the lack of control columns is purely a design oversight. The Mamba is piloted by a special Viper cadre, known as Gyro Vipers. 
They are painfully aware of the vulnerability of their aircraft, and as a result, are generally a nervous bunch. Don't let their twitchiness fool you. Their nerve only makes them extremely decisive and efficient. Give them a target, and they'll reduce it to a dark smudge before enemy assets have a chance to respond. Clad in what can effectively pass as a G-suit with its baggy appearance, padded collar harness and red piping, the Gyro Viper is well outfitted to perform some extreme flying. His flight suit wouldn't be out of place on a supersonic jet pilot. And his helmet wouldn't be out of place on Jedi in training. With the blast shield down, I can't even see. How am I supposed to fight? Following a long line of G.I. Joe and Cobra aviators, he rocks a kneeboard, a sidearm, and a knife. These boys are hard. The only accessory is his helmet. But take care, as it has a snug fit and will quickly demolish the flesh-toned paint on Gyro Viper's nose. The helmet's sculpt suggests that the silver faceplate should slide up, and I would personally prefer it if it was sculpted that way. But with Cobra's love for anonymity, I can see why this is not the case. After all, we've yet to get a glimpse at what Cobra's primary jet jock, Wild Weasel, looks like. As mentioned earlier, the cockpit is a challenging fit for O-Ring star figures. Even the intended pilot must be bent at the knees, and even then, his body must be contorted so that the canopy can close over his helmet. I suspect the central pilot position should have been longer, making it in line with the pods. As it stands, the main cockpit is far and away the most cramped. And if you're considering a modern era figure, I'd say this helicopter is not for you. It can accommodate a handful of figures, but typically not the bulky pilot types. If you have deployed the mod pods, the main craft has a tendency of being back heavy. Take care on landings. The longer central cockpit would also have helped in this regard for the overall balance of the craft. If you're lucky like me, you can find this bad boy in the dusty corners of LA. Mint and sealed box for only $80. But loose specimens in decent shape will set you back anywhere between 40 and 80 bucks on eBay. And remember, Cobra Mamba, Cobra Mamba, don't give your number to the Cobra Mamba. We hope you like G.I. Joeberg's review of the deadly Cobra Mamba attack helicopter. Subscribe to make sure you don't miss our next episode. And be sure to comment on this video. Cheers.